Hey everybody and welcome back. In my next few standalone videos, I want to examine some NPCs from Stardew Valley. I thought it would be a fun way for me to experience some scenes that I maybe don't see so often, and I'll try to provide some insight, speculation, humor, and wildly incorrect hot takes on these deeply complex characters. I'll be starting with non-marriage candidates, just because they're a little less daunting to scrutinize, but we will eventually make the rounds. I don't have a specific schedule of characters in mind, so if you have someone you really want to see, let me know down in the comments. For today though, let's start with Mayor Lewis. If you're like me and you've played so much Stardew Valley that you sometimes jam out to nature's crescendo while you're gridlocked on the interstate, you might have a pretty good feel for the secret, diabolical inner workings of Pelican Town's government. The truth is, Mayor Lewis is more despot than civil servant. As with most autocratic leaders, Mayor Lewis intentionally funnels cash flow away from infrastructure and into his own pet projects. Let's take a look at Mayor Lewis's motivations and his secrets. When you step off the bus and into the valley for the first time, Mayor Lewis is one of the first people you meet, along with Robin, the local carpenter. Lewis explains that the townspeople are excited to meet you. He's generally optimistic about the state of the farm and the farmhouse, and he seems to be concerned with your well-being. He even wants you to rest up before meeting everyone. All said, he presents himself well as the face of the town, you know? Right from the start, he's someone that you know you can lean on. When you meet up with him later, he continues to embrace the wise, old caretaker role. He asks you about your first night in the cabin, encourages you with occasional agricultural fun stipends, and hands out the occasional advice regarding farm life. But if you keep your eyes open, you'll notice things are a little bit off about Lewis and his role. Mayor Lewis claims that no one has run against him for mayor in over 20 years. He tells you outright that he thinks that means he's doing a good job. Well, that's an interesting sentiment, Mayor Lewis. When you arrive in the valley, things are not well. The farm is in disrepair, which, you know, that's not Mayor Lewis's fault. After all, Grandpa deeded it to the player. It wasn't Lewis's responsibility to maintain it. However, what other contributions does Pelican Town actually have? Willie sometimes talks about selling his fish at the market. Pierre, Robin, and Clint all run shops, but they're obviously catering to the residents of the town. Some of the bachelors and bachelorettes seem to have some kind of connections to the outside world, but for the most part, the town has no outside income, which is why it's not surprising that the place has fallen apart. There are multiple broken bridges, even if you don't consider the fact that the entire town, including George in his wheelchair, must cross an impromptu plank bridge to get to one of the most important yearly rituals the town has. There are also multiple mud slash rock slides that the town relies on either nature or outsiders to deal with. The various water sources of the town are filled with trash, the beaches are littered with refuse, most importantly, the town's single running bus is broken down and unusable, with Lewis offering no solutions. So what has Mayor Lewis been doing while the town falls into disrepair? Certainly he has a plan to raise the funds to get these issues sorted. Of course he does. One might argue that Lewis brought Joja to town to fix up these mistakes. After all, they're the ones that deal with the debris blocking the mines. Perhaps Lewis thinks that inviting a mega corporation will help revitalize his small town by providing jobs for the residents. That's certainly what happens when a big box retailer moves into small towns in real life, right? Everyone is enriched by the lower prices and convenience. And if a couple mom and pop shops close because they can't compete, well that's just the market signaling their failure to adapt, right? I mean, the valley was already struggling, even with Pierre's shop providing all the food to the residents. So this could be their only chance to really kick things into gear and become relevant again. Plus, with the lower prices, people will be more likely to shop and inject money into the local economy. Except, the prices are higher, and they won't be purchasing local products at Joja. Hmm. Well, at least Joja can repair parts of the town. After all, we know that mega corporations love getting involved in their local communities. Getting those boots on the ground really builds your image. Especially when you're wearing your uniform while you do volunteer work. Except, wait, they're not volunteering. The farmer has to pay Joja to rebuild any parts that they want fixed, with no help from Lewis. So what the heck is Lewis getting out of this anyway? My guess? Money. The farmer can find secret notes beginning during the winter of their first year, and two of them specifically are quite relevant to Lewis. Notes 19 and 21 can provide more insight into Lewis's salacious relationship and explain just what he might be doing with that Joja money. Let's start with note 19. Note 19 is a bit of a treasure hunt. You start in front of Jody and Kent's house and eventually make your way to the rear of Lewis's home. There you'll find a golden statue of Lewis himself, a pet project, as I said. 
If placed inside the town limits, Mayor Lewis will retrieve the statue at night, presumably while he's getting stuff out of your box, I don't know, then mail the player a letter expressing his disapproval. He also pays you 750 gold in hush money. It's hard to relate how much one gold in Stardew Valley is worth compared to like one US dollar. We obviously can't compare one gold to one dollar because a cup of coffee would cost $300 by that comparison. So maybe you're thinking, okay, well, one gold is one cent. But at the same time, a diamond sells for 750 gold in game. And a diamond's obviously worth more than $7.50 in real life. But maybe that's just because of the frequency with which you can find them in the game. You know, I don't want to get too deep into the math, but let's be real. Even if we assume Mayor Lewis bought his gold from Clint before the prices go up, he'd still be spending 2,150 gold for the coal and the gold ore to make one bar. That means he's offering us less than half the price of one bar that he used in the construction of this monstrosity in order for us to never bring it up again. He's almost certainly sunk more money into this project than Jojo would charge to perform every single community upgrade. I mean, imagine this. It takes us five gold bars to upgrade one tool, like your axe head. Think of your axe head. We probably found that gold ourselves, but if Mayor Lewis bought the materials for one tool upgrade, it would cost him nearly 11,000 gold. That's a healthy start toward repairing that bus and connecting the valley to the rest of the world again. Changing tact a little bit, let's talk about Note 21, because we haven't even brought up the other reason Lewis might have brought Joja. Blackmail. <laughs> I haven't even brought up Marnie, but now it's finally time. Marnie and Lewis have an interesting relationship. They are apparently so close, such good friends, that he leaves his suspenders and his purple shorts in her bedroom. He tasks you with hunting them down, since he apparently strips in so many places that he couldn't be bothered to know where they might be. Additionally, Lewis has a letter in his room with an interesting request. Apparently, someone wants him to sneak in through the back window like he's a teenager sneaking out in the night. Someone who simply signed off as M. Very interesting. Note 21 instructs you to check a bush in the evening at a specific time. If you check the bush near the entrance to the beach at 12.40pm, Marnie and Lewis will jump out and run off. I wonder what they were doing in there. Huh. The six heart event for both characters explains the situation a little more. Apparently Marnie wants to take things public, but Lewis thinks it would ruin his image. He's always been concerned about projecting this authority, apparently, I, I guess. <laughs> and you can see here that ultimately, that's more important to him than his potential future with Marnie. Which is actually really sad when you think about it, because honestly, no one in the valley would care, like not even a little bit. They could happily be married, but Lewis is just so concerned with his image, which makes me think that maybe Joja has something on him. There's obviously more to say about Lewis, but I think this might give you a feel for how there's so much more going on beneath the surface of Stardew Valley than you might first think. You know, we didn't even talk about all the things you can do with Mayor Lewis's shorts, but let me assure you, there is quite a bit of fun you can have. For example, next time you're trying to decide what you want to put in the luau pot, try putting a staircase in your pants slot. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but just trust me. We'll give you something interesting to feed the governor. If you have any thoughts on Lewis, his relationship with Marnie or Joja Mart, his monument to avarice, or anything else, let me know in the comments. If you want to see some more Stardew Valley, subscribe for me. Let me know who to look at next. Otherwise, I will hope to see you in the next video.